Hey Deckers, today I want to talk to you about Steam Deck verification process and some of the issues that are coming up. This has been making the news by quite a lot of sites recently and we recently disagreed with Remnant 2 for example where it did receive verified status but we really don't think it should. There may be a really simple solution to this but will Valve be brave enough to implement it? Before we get onto that though let's have a look at some of the issues and what the verification process is all about. From Valve's partner site for Steam Deck compatibility, we have the statuses that we've all come to know very well of verified, playable, and unsupported. They seem to have dropped the unknown tag just to make things a little bit cleaner, but if it doesn't have the status, we just assume it's unknown now. From their own compatibility checklist, it has a bunch of criteria which it has to meet perfectly to get the verified badge, and if it has an issue with some of these but still works then it will get down to the playable. These are very loose requirements around controller support, text legibility and display resolution and also no device compatibility warnings but these still seem to be implemented in a very odd way. If you look at a lot of the verified games especially those verified on deck or run great on deck they are a lot of big name titles. This almost feels like a lot more of a marketing stunt than an actual compatibility front as we are seeing more and more these days. From the Steam store we can see that there are now almost 10,100 Steam Deck compatible games that's verified or playable but that only includes the ones that are on sale so you may see some other figures from other places like Steam DB that does include games that are no longer for sale but it's not a huge amount of difference, around 10,500, about an extra 500 games that are compatible but aren't available for sale anymore. But I want to talk to you about the viability of this verified tag going forwards. For example, The Witcher 3 has verified status. It does run very well, but Red Dead Redemption only is playable. Now, the reason that Red Dead Redemption 2 is marked as playable is that the game's launcher or setup tool may require the touchscreen or virtual keyboard to plug in and some in-game text is very small and difficult to read. Now arguably the Witcher 3's launcher and also some of the text in-game is smaller than that in Red Dead Redemption 2, so in our book The Witcher 3 should also be playable. And the one that sparked a lot of the controversy this week is Remnant 2. This has been marked as verified and again these are very loose requirements. All functionality is accessible, the game shows controller icons, in-game text is legible, and the game's default configuration performs well. Yes, it does perform well, but it looks absolutely horrible. However, compatibility status doesn't state anything about the graphic quality. So as long as it performs well, as in over 30 frames per second most of the time, at least in the first half an hour of somebody testing, then it seems to get slapped with the verified tag as long as it's a big name title. Baldur's Gate 3, for example, has playable status, this does run very well and quite happily, but obviously there is a lot of small text in the game and you do need to fiddle with the controls, so this has rightly got playable status. However, things like Farlight 84, which did launch with compatibility and was marked as playable, and we did also cover this because it's a great free-to-play game, However, it hasn't worked for the last two months. If you look at ProtonDB or you try to run this, it just crashes at launch and it's been that way for over two months now, yet it's still marked as playable. This has been the case with a lot of games, although we do see updates to the status from verified to playable quite regularly, we very rarely see anything go to unsupported. And it's clear that the compatibility team at Valve just can't keep up with testing. We see a lot of re-verifications on updates, but it's very rare that we see things get unmarked. Then we have a lot of the unsupported games like Sunset Overdrive, not even with any tweaks, but just by clicking a few dialog boxes, works perfectly fine out of the box. But they say that this is unsupported. But again, if you go to somewhere like ProtonDB, everybody's saying that it's working perfectly fine. You just get a couple of warnings about compatibility. Going back to the compatibility checklist from Steam. Having no device compatibility warnings is not part of the seamless experience, but that should only make it playable and not unsupported. It really seems to be down to the opinion of whoever does the verification at the time. Now, solution-wise, this could be fairly simple, taking pretty much the same approach as things like ProtonDB, where community can submit their status. If you opted into the process, you can get asked 
by Valve when you've played a game on the Steam Deck, whether it matches the compatibility status. But this only seems to come up for verified games to confirm the verified status. In our opinion, you should be able to submit this for any of the games and mark it as verified, playable or unsupported from those games menus. It seems random when that option actually comes up. However, things like ProtonDB we can hook in, but because ProtonDB also covers all Proton versions across Linux, it's not always perfectly aimed at Steam Deck. But Valve is perfectly poised with their existing system to be able to implement this on the deck. Although it may have a few false positives now and then, it would be much closer to real opinions of whether things are playable or not. Let us know what your thoughts are on this. I really hope that Valve gets the message on this and allows us to get some more community feedback considering how community focused the Steam Deck is. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.